So we were studying uh, about compactness in LP spaces. So let me recall the theorem. So theorem. Omega in Rn bounded open set one less than or equal to p less than infinity f a bounded set in LP of omega assume one for every omega prime relatively compact in omega and for every epsilon positive there exists 0 less than delta less than the distance of omega prime from Rn minus omega such that mod tau minus h f minus f 0 p omega dash is less than or equal to is less than epsilon for every h in Rn mod h less than delta and for every f in f. Okay, so this is the condition which replaces the equicontinuity condition in the Ascoli-Arzela theorem. So, tau f minus h of x is f of x plus h. So, f of x plus h minus f of x and that in the LP norm should be small for h sufficiently small and uniformly for all f in f. So, this is the equivalent uh, condition which replaces the uh, equicontinuity condition. 2. For every epsilon positive, there exists omega dash relatively compact in omega such that for every f in f we have mod f 0 omega minus omega prime bar closure is less than epsilon. Okay, So, given these two then f is relatively compact in LP of omega. So, we want to verify these two conditions in when we are studying the various Sobel F inclusions. So, for that we need to start with one more technical lemma. Okay. So, uh, let 1 less than equal to p less than infinity omega in Rn open set is just an open set and if u belongs to w 1 p of omega then mod tau minus h u minus u 0 p omega dash is less than or equal to mod h mod u 1 p omega for every omega dash relatively compact in omega and for every h in Rn where mod h is less than d of omega dash Rn minus omega. Okay. Proof. So, 1 is less than or equal to p less than infinity and u is in, so here we had 1 less than or equal to p in fact less than or equal to infinity. So, let us now first assume that 1 less than p less than infinity and u in d of rm and if h is in rn you have u of x plus h minus u x. Once again we are going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, this is integral 0 to 1 d by dt of u of x plus th. So, dt. So, this is d by dx of x plus th. So, d by dx dt of something is therefore the, just the difference of the end values that is when x equals 1 you get u of x plus h when x t when t equals 1 when t equals 0 you get u of x and therefore this is just this. Now, if you expand the one inside you have to differentiate u with respect to each xi. So, this is equal to sigma 
i equals 1 to n d by dx i u of x plus t h and what is the i th variable x i plus t h i and therefore when you differentiate with respect to t you will get h i d t and that is equal to integral 0 to 1 grad u of x plus t h dot h dt ok. So, grad u is the usual gradient du by dx1 du by dxn ok. So, now you take the absolute value. So, you get uh, from this you will get that integral on omega dash mod tau minus h u minus u power p dx is less than or equal to mod h power p of integral I am up using Fubini also. So, I am interchanging the order of the integration 0 to mod grad u x plus t h power p dx dt ok. So, this needs a small amount of checking it is just Cauchy Schwarz inequality and then uh, Fubini and so on. So, just this is a very simple checking. So, I would like to you to do it. So, this is equal to mod h power p integral 0 to 1 integral. Now, I am going to make x plus t h as equal to y. So, then the integral will become integral omega plus t h <coughs> mod grad u y power p and then dy dt ok. So, now if you have mod h less than the distance of omega dash r n minus omega So, this will imply that there exists omega double dash which is relatively compact in omega such that omega prime plus t h is contained in omega double dash ok for t in 0 1 ok. So, then mod tau minus h u minus u power p 0 p omega prime is less than or equal to mod h power p integral omega double prime mod u grad u power p d uh, dx. So, now we have 1 less than p less than less than or equal to p less than infinity and therefore, if u belongs to w 1 p of omega uh, then by Friedrichs theorem implies there exists u n in d of r n such that u n converges to u in L p of omega and d, d u n by d x i goes to d u by d x i in L p of omega dash for every omega dash relatively compact in omega that is Friedrich's theorem. So, apply star to u n because that is in d of omega d of r n. So, and then pass to the limit because you are going to pass to the limit in L p of omega prime there is no problem in either of the uh, two, two integrals and there and pass to the limit. Then you get mod tau minus h u minus u. 0 p omega dash power p is less than or equal to mod h power p integral omega double dash mod grad u power p dx and that is less than or equal to mod h power p and then you have integral on omega. So, you will get mod u 1 p omega power p and now you take the pth root then you will get exactly what you want. Okay. So, now we take the 
we now take the case p equals infinity. So, omega prime relatively compact in omega and then you choose omega uh, prime plus t h contained in omega double dash which is relatively compact in omega uh, for t in 0 1 as before ok. And then if you take u is in w 1 infinity of omega then this will imply u belongs to w 1 infinity of omega double prime and therefore this belongs to u is in w 1 q of omega double prime since omega double prime is relatively compact therefore it will have finite measure. So, if it is in w 1 infinity then it is automatically for all q in 1 infinity. So, by the preceding arguments you get mod tau minus just u minus u 0 q omega dash is less than or equal to mod h into mod u 1 q omega double dash which is less than or equal to mod h uh, mod u 1 q omega. And now you let q tend to infinity then you get mod tau h mi minus h u minus u 0 infinity omega prime less than or equal to mod h mod u 1 infinity omega prime because you know that if, if u belongs to all the LP spaces then the limit of the LP norm as p tends to infinity is the L infinity norm ok. Ok so that proves this particular expression. Now remark if 1 is less than p less than or equal to infinity converse is true. Namely, if you have the any if that is star implies u is in w 1 p omega and in fact, we have seen this in the exercises we did this exercise ok. So, it does not does not work for p equals 1. So, functions satisfying star for p equals 1 form a larger class than w 1 1 omega. w 1 1 omega anyway satisfies it that is what we have proved just now. But if you the take the converse if you have star is true then it is uh, not necessarily in w 1 1 omega it is in some bigger space we call that we call such functions. functions of bounded variation. And such spaces are called BV spaces. Okay. So, so, now we are ready to prove the important theorem of this section namely relic Kondrasov. So, omega in R n bounded open set of class C 1. Let 1 less than equal to p less than infinity then the following inclusions are compact 1 p less than n then w 1 p omega included in L q of omega 1 less than equal to q strictly less than p star 
to P equals N W one N omega included in L Q of omega one less than equal to Q less than infinity three P bigger than N W one P omega included in C of omega bar. And if omega any domain uh, bounded, uh, then above assertions hold with W one P omega being replaced by w 1 p 0 of omega. Now, where does this class C 1 and all that come? That comes because of the Sobolev embeddings. We needed that for the Sobolev embeddings to be true because we proved it in R n and then use the Sobolev embedding, um, use the extension operator to go to R n and come back to prove the Sobolev embeddings for various domains. If w 1 p 0 is there, the extension by 0 is already there as a extension operator and therefore, you do not need any other uh, smoothness of the boundary. That is why. So, that is the only reason why we have those uh, that condition on the boundary. Okay, so proof already proved case 3. If p is bigger than n, we already saw that w1 p omega were all Helder continuous functions. So, if you took the unit ball, then you would get those functions are bounded and uniformly continuous and therefore, you had by the ascoli Arcelor theorem the compactness. So, assume 1 is proved, namely for p less than n, assume that we have proved all these things. Then using that, we can prove the case n equal. So, when p increases to n, so recall that 1 by p star is 1 by p minus 1 by n. Okay? This implies that p star goes to infinity. So, if q is less than infinity, there exists epsilon positive sufficiently small such that n minus epsilon star is bigger than q. Okay. Now, we have w omega bounded. So, w 1 n of omega is continuously embedded in w 1 n minus epsilon of omega because if you are in any LP, you are in any smaller LP for sets of finite measure. And now, this is uh, in L q of omega and this is compact by 1 okay, because you have n minus epsilon star is bigger than q and therefore, the first assertion tells you that if you are less than the critical Sobolev, the, the p star is called the critical Sobolev exponent, you lose compactness there and therefore, anything less than that it is compact and therefore, this one is compact. So, this implies that w 1 n omega in L, L q of omega compact for all 1 less than equal to q strictly less than infinity. So, to prove 1. So, we take p less than n and b closed unit ball in w 1 p omega. So, we need to verify the two conditions of the uh, fresche kolmogorov theorem which uh, I restated in the beginning of this uh, video 1 and 2. We have to show that for every omega prime relatively compact in omega and for every epsilon you have tau minus f f is less than 0 in 0 p omega prime is less than epsilon for h sufficiently small. And then there is a omega epsilon such that for all elements in f. So, we have to verify it with the f equals b. So, to verify 
1 and 2 of uh, Freshet Kolmogorov. First theorem above. with f equal to b okay so that's all that we have to do now so let us take one less than equal to q strictly less than p star okay then there exists alpha which belongs to 0 1 okay with 0 is excluded such that 1 by q can we have done this before alpha by 1 plus 1 minus alpha by p star Okay. So, if you want 1, uh, if you want p star, then alpha must be 0, which we are excluding because we are saying less than p star. So, then if u belongs to b, and omega prime relatively compact in omega, And if h in Rn such that mod h is less than distance of omega dash Rn minus omega, you have mod tau minus h u minus u 0 q Rn, okay, uh, sorry, omega dash, not R. less than or equal to mod tau minus h u minus u 0 1 omega dash power alpha we have seen this before when we when we proved that after the Sobolev inequality w1 rn is in lp star and then we wanted to show it that it's in in every lq for q in between p and p star and we made a similar uh, expression for q and then we had this inequality just because of helder inequality so this is helder Okay, and uh, mod tau minus h u minus u in 0 p star omega dash to the power of 1 minus alpha. Okay, now the first one because you are in uh, 0 1 omega prime, anything in LP we have bounded domain omega dash compact, etc. So, you this is by the previous lemma this is less than mod h into mod u 1 1 omega dash okay and that power alpha and this one e, tau h u minus h u in lp star is the same as u in lp star because of the translation invariance of the Lebesgue measure so you get 2 mod u 0 p star omega dash power 1 minus alpha and now I can write this is less than or equal to I can instead of I can take it also let us say this lesson mod h mod u 1 1 omega power alpha into 2 mod u 0 p star omega power 1 minus alpha that is less than or equal to some constant times mod h to the power of alpha mod u 1 1 omega is less than or equal to norm u 1 p omega because if you are in l p then you are automatic in l 1 inclusion is uh, compact and therefore this is less than or equal to norm u 1 p omega power alpha and this of course the 2 I absorb in the constant here. 0 p star by the Sobolev inequality is also less than norm u 1 p power alpha. So, you have alpha and then norm u to the 1 p omega to the 1 minus alpha that is less than equal to c mod h to the alpha norm u 1 p omega. Now, u is in b. So, this is less than equal to 1. So, this is like a c mod h to the alpha. So, now choose 0 less than delta less than uh, d of omega dash uh, rn minus omega such that c delta to the alpha is less than 
epsilon. So then this implies that uh, for all mod h less than delta, we have that uh, mod tau minus h u minus u 0 q omega dash is less than e, is strictly less than epsilon. So this proves the first condition in the fresh kolmogorov theorem. The second one is to show that you for there exists a omega dash which uh, for every u in b you can make it uh, the integral small. So now if u is in b and omega dash relatively compact in omega then you have mod u 0 q omega minus omega prime closure is less than or equal to so you are writing uh, by so this is just held in inequality so u power q belongs to u l of p star by q because uh, u is in p star okay l p star so u power q belongs to l of p star by q so then this will give you mod u power 0 p star omega minus omega prime closure okay and then you would have got p q by p star and then uh, the q i will take q at root on this side so this is power q okay into mod omega minus omega prime uh, 1 minus q by p star this power q ok. So now if I you will get mod u 0 q omega minus omega prime closure is less than or equal to c times norm u 1 p omega because of the Sobolev inequality this one is less than the norm in lp star omega which is less than norm of 1 p omega into mod omega minus omega dash of 1 by q minus 1 by p star ok. So now this of course is less than or equal to 1 therefore we can choose omega prime relatively compact in omega filling omega as closely as possible as necessary. So you have that you have omega here I can take omega dash very close to the boundary like this so this will be omega dash and therefore what is left will be very very small so this measure can be made as small as you like and this implies that mod u 0 q omega minus omega prime closure is less than epsilon for all uh, u in b. Okay, so this is so. So the two conditions are satisfied. Uh, therefore, this implies that B is uh, relatively compact in L Q of omega. That is, W one P omega in L Q of omega is compact, and that proves the. Uh, fresh kolmogorov theorem I mean uh, relic Kondrasov theorem. So remark proof fails for q equals p star. Why does it fail for q equals p star? It fails in both the verifications. The first verification you needed 1 by q if you put this then you need alpha equal to 0. So if you get alpha equal to 0 then the c mod h to the alpha becomes just a constant and therefore you cannot make it small. You can't make it less than epsilon by choosing delta small. Therefore this step will fail. This step will fail because you do not have this term here. Okay. Now the second one will fail because this omega minus omega dash will again become power 0 here and therefore this term will fail now this term will be lost and therefore you cannot make the mod u q omega minus omega prime closure as small as you like. So both cases it fails so the proof fails for q equals omega and in fact we can show that w 1 p of omega in l p star of omega not compact 
the fa fact that this proof failed is not uh, proof that this is not compact. We can actually show that this in cannot be compact. We will see examples in the exercises. Okay, so that shows. Okay, so now. Another remark, let 1 less than or equal to p less than infinity omega in Rn bounded domain open set class C1, okay. So then W1p of omega is in particular, comp this is compact, Lp of omega compact. So, particular case, so q equals p in relic, okay. So, this is a particular case, okay. So, then iterating, we get the w m plus 1 p omega contained in w m p omega is compact, Okay, so you can uh, easily check this. So, uh, this is true for all m greater or equal to c1. Okay, so this is another remark. So, now we will see some applications of this uh, next time.